okay let me tie it on her kind of thing because i'm gonna read my favorite book worth review i don't think i'm actually prepared Okay, my hair is a nightmare, but we don't care. Hello, wolves. What's up? I hope you're good. So today, as I said at the very beginning, we're gonna see some very bad reviews of my all-time favorite books. Hopefully, I won't cry. Hopefully so. But yeah, I'm ready. I think I am. I should be. Let's jump into it. So you know my all-time favorite series. I mean, not my all-time favorite series, but one of them is actually the We Were Children series. So we're gonna check some bad reviews of, let's say the first book, Every Heart the Doorway, because I don't wanna spoil anything, anyone. I see three stars already, and I'm, I, I'm, oh. First, it has an average of 3.83 out of 5, which I totally disagree with. I don't know what's wrong with you people for not rating that book at least, at least a 4.9. Like, seriously. In popular opinion time, I very rarely give books one star ratings, but I just didn't like it. The majority of my friends and the world loved it, and I'm glad they did, but it just wasn't for me. Enough said. Yeah, that's fair. If it wasn't for you, as long as you're not trashing the book. I mean, I trash. Sarah Jima's books like the Throne of Glass series or so, yeah you could trash any books but not the We Were Children series. Fear me there is a way to create atmosphere and this book spectacularly fails. I cringe through the last 50 pages. If it had been longer than a novella I would not have made it through. I don't know what cringed you? First of all, Maguire's dialogue is so mannered. The way every character speaks and behaves is died up to 11. There is no subtlety and yet, in spite of or because of that, it all feels very shallow. Characterization is in bold strokes across the page, but to me it comes across a cartoonish. I would not want to visit a single one? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, you would have wanted to visit them all. This book is so squalish and grim. You guys, it's like Maguire is saying, hey, magic exists and everything is still terrible. Who? This is the worst comment ever. What the fuck was this? I mean, how can you even say what the fuck was this? This is so wrong. I don't know, this book is so magical and I wish I was one of those kids and I had a doorway like this. My. This book is extremely weird and while I appreciate weird, marvelous things for the most part, I have to admit that this book was completely bonkers, even for my taste. I feel like I was reading the second book of a series. I never got to connect with the characters and the story. This does actually really makes sense in some way so yeah because you're actually dealing with kids who came back from different worlds kind of thing and they have to deal with that with the fact that they cannot go back to those magical words worlds not words you don't know where they came from like yeah it actually makes sense dnf at 80 percent. are you kidding this is a 150 pages long book how can you dnf a 150 pages book seriously i guess you can like i'm just trying to understand and if i sound mean that's not the point like i'm not trying to get mean or mad or whatever i'm just i don't understand some stuff like i don't know i found the writing and characterizations to be ridiculous the characters were not well developed personalities but rather caricature 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 the execution was horrid writing bland characters bland Plot sense blend, writing style blend, 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 vanilla ice cream, plain Fritos, flips, flops with socks. Okay, let's move on to another book because I honestly don't get any of these comments. Like, yes, I did get some of the comments, but even some of my friends only gave it three stars and I'm just so surprised. Like, I see many five stars from the person I follow on Goodreads, but... Okay, so I went on Goodreads and I just like looked at other books I gave five stars. And let's see with A Natural History of Drag, which is the book series that's just behind me here. Uh, I gave the first book five stars because I enjoyed it. I loved it. Everything. I hate that book. I just want to know what... I mean, I don't want to know what people... Why people wouldn't give it five stars. It has a rating uh, of 3.82. Also, I don't understand why that low. Even if it's not that low, whatever. <sighs> I would have expected more. 
I really wanted to like this book, but I just didn't like the main character, and the plot too was kind of disappointing. I don't see why, like, I really enjoyed the main character. She wasn't annoying, she wasn't, like, complaining all the time, she wasn't a cliche, she wasn't anything, so I don't get why the main character was kind of annoying. And the plot was actually really good, like, if you love historic and fiction, mix it to fantasy kind of thing, why wouldn't you love that book? It had everything, like a powerful woman who's weird, that society doesn't want her to be powerful doesn't want her to have some kind of knowledge or whatever but she's still trying to do whatever she can in order to get that knowledge to get some privilege etc etc so i really enjoyed it and the tone it was written i i, I mean i loved it when the end after it okay not enough dragons i don't care about finding a dumb husband well um okay fair enough I guess not enough dragons, but do you want dragons to be everywhere when people are just trying to kill them or they're afraid of them? Like the wolves, like imagine having wolves around your house. Would you like them to be there or would you like someone to kill them actually? And so no, you don't want more dragons around anyone's house. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry the husband wasn't dumb. He was kind. He wasn't dumb. I was hooked by the idea of Victoria era woman studying and investigating dragons as I'm a sucker for both period fiction and fantasy. Unfortunately, I was left extremely disappointed. For a book with dragons in the title, they are woefully lacking. They appear in the narrative a mere handful of times and generally have very little to do other than act as a motivation device for the main character. I could accept the paucity of dragons uh, if the story were interesting or engaging, but it is neither. The central mystery isn't compelling and doesn't make much sense when it is resolved. The story drags terribly. Okay, again, I don't know. I don't get why you're thinking that. Like, I feel about the lack of dragons. I, I don't agree with it because we got dragons. But when you're trying to study a certain species kind of thing, that's because that species is not especially well known or it's not everywhere or it's not easy to catch or whatever. So if you want dragons everywhere, it would have it wouldn't have been called a natural history of dragons, like a natural history of dinosaurs, etc, etc. This comment for me doesn't really make sense, because yes, a natural history of dragons, but it's not telling you it's a high fantasy book, it's not telling you it is like a high fire space, do you say high fire space? A fast paced book about a girl who's gonna get some kind of power and control dragons or whatever, that's not that. This is a historical fiction fantasy about a girl who wants to study dragons who wants to be a naturalist. Why did everyone expect like an adventure with dragons everywhere? No, that's not what the synopsis is about and I'm getting mad but there is nothing to be mad about but yeah. Did not get past the first few pages, never mind. Well, at least you stopped then, I guess. Not my cup of tea at all, that's fine, that's that's absolutely fine. Stop reading around page 50. Story appears to be going nowhere and the writing is middle school snark. Well, I completely disagree. Okay, I'm not gonna read all the reviews because so many of them have spoilers, which they didn't even hide. That's completely wrong. Lady Trent also made herself out to be such an independent woman, but she came off simply immature and reckless. Sure, she is 19, but it felt like she was being propelled into the situation just for the drama of it and they didn't even serve to make great bits of actions. I mean, at 19 you can be a bit reckless, I mean, it makes sense. And when people at 12 are overly smart or 17 are overly smart in books, people complain about it. So now you're 19 and a bit reckless, immature, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't get that. But, okay. <sighs> okay, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. So I gave that book five stars and it has an overly rating, like overall rating of 4.00 out of 5. So, which is way better, but I'm sure we're gonna see some very bad reviews. <laughs> A short guide to writing super magical fiction. You should not cannot, will not use a single contraction except in dialogue, and then you must make sure a full antiquated vernacular is involved whenever incomprehensible, mythic and or magical things occur. Do not deviate from this rule, ever. 
okay sir do not give your characters a shred of personality because that would mean they are people and people do not belong in super magical fiction your villain must be full on generic evil because that means it is an archetype which is very super magical and also it will be a good contrast to the generic good of the magical beings who will save the mundane behind of the protagonist this is crucial step your protagonist must in no way do anything proactive or have a clue about anything at all because that will mean less super magical action. Oh my gosh, I feel like attacked. To best achieve this, it is best to make your protagonist a child because children do not have a clue and are thus super magical. Adults do have some clues, but not many are the right ones and they definitely do not get super magical things. They are in fact so sad and lousy that their only purpose is to be an object lesson in a hot to be sad and lousy. Make certain you have included some kind of magical animal and also employed some allusion to fairies because they are not people. Animals can make super magical fiction more super magical and fairies, as everyone knows, are the super magical sprinkles on fantasy super magical cake. Last but not least, at the climactic moment of your super magical climax, you must include some super magical revelation about how super magical reality is underneath all the sad sack adult business. If you do not do this, you are just a sad and lousy adult who does not deserve to read or write super magical fiction. Your fantasy cake shall never be sprinkled. The end. Someone commented, my god, your brain is a square. I don't even know what to answer to this. This is probably one of the worst comments I will ever read. And I felt attacked. Wow, you probably don't have any kind of magic around you. <gasps> Oh my gosh, like again, I feel why not every book is for everyone. I guess that, I mean, I I totally get that. I don't like all the books and I like, I hate some books and I totally understand why people would love them. But this is aggressive. This is a bit too much. This is a bit way too aggressive. And I felt attacked, like I have like, my eyes are watery kind of thing because I really felt attacked by that comment. It was really well written. I really love that type of comments, whatever that just make you feel. But this was mean and useless, well written. But why would you do that? Like, I hated this book so much. I actually never want to talk about it ever again. Fair enough. Don't talk about it ever again. What the hell did I just read? Like, the point of this book, like, Every book I feel of Neil Gaiman has a hidden message in it and was written to actually allow yourself to wonder and to understand your own truth kind of thing. Neil Gaiman doesn't write books with only one meaning, with only one truth, with one only one path, whatever. He writes in a way that everyone who would read his book will see something different, will understand something different, will feel something different. And I feel that's the magic behind his writing. His writing is definitely special and not for everyone. But you can just say it's not for it's not for everyone. It, it wasn't for me. I didn't get it. I didn't feel anything. I wasn't. I didn't feel connected. Whatever. But you cannot say that this was trash or whatever. This is the magic behind his writing and I love him he's one of my favorite author and I should do like a one week read it on uh for Neil Gaiman for myself kind of thing or a month only uh, of only Neil Gaiman or whatever I feel attacked because for me Neil Gaiman is actually a genius the story was all over the place shadow bearers that aid existence a flappy thing embodying a woman and giving people what they want a notion that is not a notion old ancient powers of good I feel disturbed and uncomfortable after reading. It just made me feel really negative and disgust. Neil Gaiman is not my thing. I watched Stardust when it came out and absolutely fell in love with it. That's when I thought Neil Gaiman is awesome. But after Good Omens never were and this, I don't think I like Gaiman's style. Some things are just not meant to be. You shouldn't have added like that last sentence. Some things uh, are just not meant to be. I disagree with that. Like, no, I agree with that in life in general but not with Neil Gaiman's writing or books or whatever I feel you like Neil Gaiman is not for everyone I feel like each author has a specific style etc etc and some are n just not for everyone but saying that some things are just not meant to be this is absolutely like I completely disagree I agree that you 
said that, but I disagree with the fact you said that. That doesn't make any sense. Never mind. Neil Gaiman is just not for me, folks. And that's fine. That's what I said. That's absolutely fine. Just don't trash it to trash it. The Bear and the Nightingale has a rate of 4.12 out of 5. Do you think people give that book a one-star review? Oh my gosh, I'm scared. There are one-star reviews. Woof. That first comment is already getting to me. This book went from a story promised on Russian folklore to one that not only degrades Christians, but is also characterizes them as duplicious and malevolent. Look, real life compresses layers and nuances, and not one group is completely good or bad. But to malign, for instance, an entire race because of prejudice and or ignorance is not acceptable to me. Not unless such is required to advance the story. And quite frankly, I don't believe that Arden adequately justifies this plot device, which makes it seem like a self indulgent deliberate and malicious subversion in orthodox Christianity. Okay, there are some books that are getting some backlash, I mean the authors, etc, because racism, because of LGBT kind of thing or whatever, and I never got those because whenever I dive into a book, I'm aware that it is a fiction and I don't see everything that's bad and that everyone is saying. I don't know, I didn't see any of that. Uh, the only thing I saw is that in Russian folklore, in old Russian folklore, uh, the woman has no right, let's say. She can only be a good like wife and a good kid and do whatever the husband wants her to do, etc, etc. But that's the case in a lot of uh, cultures in the past and even today's in some cultures. That's a fact. Yeah, I don't see the rest actually in that book and it's actually destroying a very dear book to me kind of thing. So never have I ever been betrayed this much over a book that I was 100% looking forward to loving but ended up thinking of a mediocre at best and boring as fuck. I've been having a great reading year so the bad books should just not. <gasps> There are 28 chapters in this book. I spent 22 of those chapters just hoping and praying for it to end. Seriously, didn't you get the magic behind it? With the Russian folklore, Russian beliefs, and all the little monsters kind of thing? DNF at 16%. Maybe it's great once you get into it. I gave it 50 pages and was bored stiff. I hoped I would feel motivated to give it another go after I took a break, but weeks later I'm not at all interested. Which is absolutely fine. I absolutely respect those kind of comments uh, because, well, not every book... I, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that, but I respect the fact that you just said that it wasn't for you, which is different than it's a bad book, you know what I mean? This book really had potential, however, the awkward and distracted writing became a slug after a few chapters. The writing side was amazing, it was magical, it was lyrical, it was like fairy telling kind of thing. <gasps> so many actually DNF'd it. You know, one said, poo. Okay, that's a very smart comment, <laughs> but that's fair enough. I can't pretend to understand why women are still writing female characters trapped in a past that bound them predominantly and restlessly to men who sought to control them, enslave them, rape them. I can't pretend to understand why a publisher wants these sorts of stories in 2017, even as it makes me sad. Yeah, capitalism. I can't pretend to understand I maybe more accurately I state I won't. The literary canon doesn't need another story filled to the brain with women who, instead of getting to choose their own fates, are married off because they hid puberty, subject to lie quietly beneath men who don't know them, don't love them, and don't see them as autonomous humans. This I actually kind of agree because we got that in a lot of books uh, where women don't especially have choices. I feel like it's because of why whatever a lot of why readers are maybe the majority like the majority is maybe female kind of thing and people maybe authors are trying to show you that these characters didn't have a choice but they're gonna make a choice at one point they're gonna make you hope that you can actually change your future that you can actually do something that will matter etc etc i feel this is why we have that in books but also to remind us that we are kind of lucky that it's not the case everywhere. I'm just saying everywhere. I know it's still the case in some places. But I'm lucky enough to say that my parents doesn't want me to get married if I don't want 
then I will never. They don't want me to have children if I don't want children. They don't want to like make me meet people, etc, etc. So I'm lucky enough to say that I'm not one of those who needs that hope. But actually sometimes I'm reading fantasy because I'm still hoping that I will find a door that will lead me to a magical world, you know what I mean? So this is why you fantasy and if an author can make you feel for a character, feel bad for that character and make you believe that that character is going to be okay by the end of the book and that maybe you're going to be okay by the end of the year or whatever, well, that's well done. I mean, no? Am I seeing that too far? I don't know. Okay, next book. My favorite book of all time is actually Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, which is a very old classic, let's say, and it has one star reviews, which I totally get it because the very first book is very, very slow and I almost gave up on it uh, because it was very slow for the entire book. Uh, it was just like speeding up at the very end. It is a classic, so it's not for everyone. So I'm kind of better prepared for these reviews, I think. The writing was good, plot was interesting, however, it left me with a bad taste in my mouth because the Count of Monte Cristo is a villain. This guy is pure evil. He makes himself out to be the hand of God. Reviews here. People, stop reviewing with spoilers. I'm marking this as a DNF raid. I just don't care about any of the story. I don't like it. I don't like the characters. I'm only a little over halfway and this has been on my currently reading list for months. Life is too short. Yep. Yeah. Good for you for DNFing a book that you weren't feeling like reading. DNF of one person. One person. How many pages is that? Like... Okay, someone read that book once there and said, Best book ever. I'm seriously a bit concerned that I won't read a book as good as this ever again. This is the best book that I have ever read in my entire life. It is the best book ever and I will let you know if by some miracle another book gets close to or even better. I don't think so. And this book best book ever in the entire universe. God must have possessed the author whilst he was writing it. Most people will think I'm delusional when I say it's the greatest book ever, but why don't you read it and prove me wrong if you don't believe me? I don't get that. Maybe that person made a mistake. Dumas is an enduring favorite of readers and the universal shower of praise on Goodreads for this novel is evidence of that. I, however, did not find it awesome at all. I thought it was awful. Spoilers included read at your own risk. Why do you always read you with spoilers. So one of my favorite series is The Inherited Cycle, so the first book is Aragon and it has a rate of 3.9 on Goodreads, which is lower than I would have expected it to be. I cannot adequately express my complete and utter loathing for this book. I was working at the library during the time that this book was being published and had access to a gallery of the novel. I did finish it, but only so I could know entirely how much Christopher Paolini, the supposed 16 years old author genius, has plagiarized J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Really? Do you feel like it has? Oh yeah, he found the axe, the other one found the ring. Okay, but then you can say that about every single book because like, especially in Y fantasy. How many princes are lost and don't know they are princesses? How many people have magic but they're not aware that they have magic and they're gonna discover it when they need it the most and save the country etc. It happens in so many books. So I disagree. Wow, that actually shocked me. I never thought of that. Never heard of that. That makes me mad. This was straight up painful. Probably the most expensive fan fiction I've ever read. I'm not sure what possessed a publishing company to publish this book. I also wrote a book when I was 16, much like Paolini, and the quality was pretty much the same as Aragon, that is to say. Awful. Aragon the characters is a total Mary Sue, Gary Stu. He learns to fight with the sword in just a few weeks. His past is angsty. He's the first dragon rider for centuries, etc, etc. This becomes even more clear in the next book, Eldest. Everyone loves Aragon, and those who don't are evil or will repent their ways. This book spells straight excellently. Unfortunately, that's the best quality it possesses. Like, really? I really want to reread that series because I read it like 10 years ago or something, like even more, no, even more. I read it in French, so I would be curious to actually reread it in English and to reread as an adult and maybe I would understand more of the reviews here. I don't feel like I'm gonna hate that book, I'm gonna love that series forever. Like it's on my top with Narnia, Harry Potter, The We Watch in the Series, Dark Materials, Compass, Golden Compass kind of thing. I hated the book and barely finished it. I hated the movie. Okay, the movie was really bad. When I saw that movie, I almost cried how bad it was and 
and how disappointed I was in. So I feel you on that, but the book, the book was better, I swear. Honestly, one of the worst books I have ever read. I don't want to know what you've read then. It's like Lord of the Rings ate Star Wars, then threw up. What's the point of this comment? Where is the Star Wars coming from? Like, I, I get a lot of people are talking about Lord of the Ring because they say pleasure is and kind of thing, but Star Wars? Oh, I want to reread that series. Can we cry? Can it? Oh my gosh, how come a bad review can make me cry? Aragon is like a bad pop song. On the very surface, there is some entertainment value, something to read or listen, then bored. However, when you actually start thinking about it, you realize it reads, sounds like a million other books' songs. It is an original and cliched. But wait, there's more. The person who wrote the book has an inflated ego. Throughout the narrative, he maintains an arrogant tone and praises his overwrought prose by comparing to Tolkien's at his greatest. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna stop. That makes me mad. How can you... Oh my gosh, I need to reread that series. I need to reread that series. I don't know how many books I've read bad reviews of, girls. Let's go for one more. Let's go with Six of Crows, who has a rating of 4.46 out of 5, which is super, super high. But it has one-star reviews, so we're gonna discover why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite series ever also, but Six of Crows is actually for me better than Crooked Kingdom when it's usually the opposite for other people. And I want a no monus, no funeral statue. It took me all of two chapters, maybe 20 pages, to realize this is not the book for me. It's got tons of names you can't remember or pronounce. Political intrigue out to a zoo, a sadistic strike, and a high scope plot. All of those elements immediately turned me off to this book. Not my cup of tea at all. And I actually really respect that comment because she's so in the 21st pages that it had a lot of stuff she didn't like and she didn't continue with it, which I really respect that. I love that some people have the power, because I call it a power, to identify what they're not gonna like in the book from the very beginning, so they don't waste their time to actually continue with the series. And I actually agree with the names you cannot remember or you cannot pronounce kind of thing, which happens in a lot of fantasy books. Less in sci-fi, I feel, but I've been reading less sci-fi the past few months, the past year kind of thing, YA or adult, whatever, but I feel like mostly YA. So I totally feel you on that, so that's why sometimes I google the names or I listen to a little bit of the audiobook when there is an audiobook available. So I just make sure that the voices, like that the voice in my head, you know, when you read, you actually hear what you're hearing. It doesn't make sense. Whatever, you crazy, Sasha. I make sure that I'm saying the name the right way because otherwise... Um, some people will be talking about that character and gonna be like, but who's that character? And actually we're talking about the same, but not the same pronunciation. Oh my gosh, this... Okay, Sasha. When this book first came out, it got a ton of buzz. I wanted to check it out, but never got around to it. Finally, I nabbed a copy and off I was. I found myself confused at the start. Wasn't sure of the affection and who was with who. I made it halfway through, figured out some things, but for the most part, I realized I didn't care. As this is the second book from this author that I DNF'd, I think she isn't for me. Yes, absolutely. I hated Throne of Glass. Like, I hated Throne of Glass, the first one. I hated it. The second book, I didn't like it. And the third book, Hair of Fire. Is that the third book? I DNF'd it because at this one, I couldn't care less about anything happening. I experienced a reading slump one month, almost two months, because I forced myself in reading the Throne of Glass series. Because of that, I'm scared to read anything by Sarah Jamas, and I will never read anything by Sarah Jamas again, which is really bad to say because never say never or whatever, but the last book came out by Sarah Jamas. I saw everyone reading it, and I was like, okay, I don't even want to read it. I don't even want to give it a try. So if you find an author you're not comfortable with, you don't like it, whatever, and you gave it a chance like twice or three times or whatever, just forget about it. Even if everyone is talking about that book, just don't read it. There is another author I don't feel comfortable ever reading from, whatever. It is Cassandra Clare. I've read the three first books in the first series in Infernal, Infernal Devices. Is that Infernal? Immortal? In whatever, the first series, then the two books in the second series, and I just gave up. Like, oh my gosh, ah, uh, never again. <laughs> so that's fine.
The only thing I liked about this book was that its pages were black. Other than that, too wordy, slow pace, and I didn't care about any of the characters. Well, I'm a character-driven person kind of thing, like I love character-driven books, so most of the time, even if the plot is lacking, I will enjoy the book if the characters are amazing, which I really felt connected to in Six of Crows, but yeah, I totally get why it was slow-paced, etc. I I kind of see it, so yeah, thank you for giving it a try at least. The more I think about it, the more this should have been a one star because how much I hated it. I picked up for complex, morally great characters, not unrealistic, boring teenagers, and immoral assholes adults. Because of course, every single adult character in this book is an asshole since every adult in this world turns out bad. I don't have much hope for these characters 10 years down the line, sorry. I totally feel that because sometimes I felt like the characters were actually 28 or whatever, but they were super young. So I actually kind of agree with some of it, but they were absolutely amazing. Oh, I actually love the characters. So Six of Crows will forever be one of my favorite books. But yeah, well, so I almost cried, so I hope you enjoyed seeing me almost crying over reviews, which I I honestly didn't think that would happen. And still thinking about one, I'm like getting mad or whatever, but this was actually fun because most of the time you would agree with some of it and then you will see very mean comments and useless comments and you will be like, okay, why did you take the time to write this? This doesn't make sense. You have something against that author, whatever. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, Wolves, and let me know some of your favorite books that you've read and that people actually trashed it, etc, etc, down below. Like, I would love to know so I can maybe tell you sorry if I actually trashed that book. <laughs> but yeah, Wolves, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to your part of the pack. Talk to me in the comment section as usual. And until next time, take care, Wolves. Bye.